Okay, so now, we have made it to the final full zone of the game, the Death Egg. And obviously, obviously I took a hit and lost my rings. Yeah, you don't have to worry about falling into a bottomless pit in this first act. Um, there's only one of them, but there are a lot more later on. So there's going to be a lot of crazy stuff going on in here. So those things launch you. Those things hurt you. I didn't think I was going to get hit by them. But apparently I did. Yeah, Thunder Shield is invaluable here. You're definitely going to want its use. And how the heck did I get damaged there when I have the Thunder Shield? That made no sense. Okay, so you got to avoid... These, well, you gotta avoid the spikes, but you really want to be careful about getting hit by missiles, too. It's very easy. I'm getting hit by everything here. I am not off to a good start here in the Death Egg. So here, jump up. Little... I, I don't know if that's a magnetized platform or not. I'm guessing it is. Considering the way it hung itself to the conveyor belt. I'll just jump past the missiles. Take another one of these things for a ride. Now we go up. Now I'm gonna demonstrate one of these things. It basically creates a light tunnel, a light tube for you to take a ride in. And most of them like this take a really crazy path and for the most part you don't want to use them because you end up skipping a lot of goodies what do you do? Goodies I hope to obtain without getting hit. So yes, yeah, there's a thunder shield. There's also a lot of rings down here. There's 10. There's 20. I uh, couldn't quite bounce onto the third to get the trifecta. I wanted to get the awesome trifecta there, but not meant to be, I guess. Nonetheless, we're moving on. So now that we got all the goodies, Let's keep on moving. And the, the, those things, they make you hover. And yeah, there are also these crazy inverting tunnels that really screw up the gravity on you. But thankfully you can keep yourself contained in a set direction. Okay. I want to drop down here, get the invincibility, and away we go. Because you'll really need the invincibility here. If you're really being bold, use the invincibility and then run across this area. That's the only bottomless pit down there that you have to worry about. The rest of it, it's just fine. What's not fine is that I'm in the slot machine. I don't want to be in the slot machine. I want to be in the good bonus stage. Where I can get lots of rings and lots of lives. I mean, not that I have to worry about lives, I already have 39 of them, as you can see. But yeah, here's another really funky area. The gravity pulls you in towards this little platform that moves up and down. And you have to hit the yellow dots on them that they, so that they turn red. And you have to hit all six yellow dots so that they become all six red dots. And only then can you move on. And so having accomplished that, we can now continue. Oh, I'll, I'll get myself up, or maybe I won't. Okay, apparently you do need propulsion there. Okay, so now here's the situation where the light tube actually takes you on a legitimate path. Stay out of my way. And then this one I'm going to intentionally avoid because this is another one of those situations where you can get a lot of goodies if you avoid using it. Lots of goodies over here if you can avoid using the light tube. 30 more rings among them. And so, yeah, I won't need to worry too much about... There was a save point up there, but I've already made it to the mid-boss. Now, if you're feeling really bold... Well, the normal way you would beat it is you'd try and avoid the jumping or the spinning orbs. But he periodically pulls them up to himself. And then once you clear that, 
Then there are these two platforms with spikes on them that spin around. And, but, and as was well the non-stop going laser there that he has, but if you have supersonic, it's no problem. So we've completed Act 1 here in the Death Egg, and that one went by very quickly. And we get another one up, and we're now over 40. So there goes the spinning sign, and it's time for me to spin into Act 2. Here now there are definitely a lot more bottomless pits, so you definitely have to be more cautious. Now you'll want to take advantage of those platforms that are... I, I don't know what you would ca kind of call those kinds of platforms. But here they also um, mess up with your gravity quite a bit. You go through one of those inverting areas and it changes your gravity on you, as you saw. Thankfully though, the controls are still the same. So you don't have to worry about compensating when you have your gravity inverted or re-inverted. So, yeah, you can still press down and you'll go where you need to go. And then these little shafts will also change your gravity. And I didn't want to do that. I'm not too worried. But I'll be worried if I die without really putting up a fight. Yeah, no, no bonus stage for me this time, unfortunately. Yeah, you can get stuck sometimes when you're trying to make a move because you have so much momentum on you. That's one of the weird get ways this game glitches on you. And yeah, if that happens, you could end up getting squashed. And here you want to just follow the springs, make those transitions. And you don't want to jump too high there, or you can actually land, jump, that you can hit your head on those, that electricity there. Whoa, ho ho. And then these things, you want to basically tilt them, but you want to tilt them just enough. If you tilt them too much, the, the platform will actually collapse. So you have to be careful about that. Just want to... Temper your gusto here. Slot machine. Alright, fine. Well, I'm, I'm, I swear I'm telling you, I've never done this well on the slot machine in a playthrough of Sonic and Knuckles ever. This, this is one of the few times, if any, the slot machine has been that generous. Because it is never that generous under normal circumstances. Now we have another one of these crazy light tube things. But this time, as you can see, that really does help you with a legitimate purpose. This one I don't think so. Yeah, this one just throws you around. Okay, so now... Basically... Those things basically tell- can- you can go wherever you want with the first one, not so much with the second. And I hate to lose all my rings before I get to the boss. So thankfully I get a 10 ring refuel. Come on. Stick a ride here! Yeah, you need to move quickly here, like, you need to be cautious, but you also need to be aggressive because, um, you have a 10 minute time limit here, of course, and if you don't move fast enough, it can come back to haunt you. And thankfully I escaped disaster. Now, I do not want to have a disaster now, right, as I'm about to go to where Dr. Eggman is. Come well, on, let's get out of here. Oh, uh, you gotta be kidding- yeah, you gotta be kidding me, like, let me get out of here, please. Okay, the end of Act 2. Here's the boss that Eggman sends your way. It's this anti-gravity orb thing that will drop little, um, little, like, 
driving things with spikes on them. And what you have to do is you have to change gravity in such a way that you have to time it that these little s wheeled machines with spikes will drop the... Um, will actually raise and hit the that little giant thing on its belly because if you hit it while it's at the top of... How did I get hit there? Th that should not have happened, and how did I lose my shield in the first place? That should not have happened. It really should not have happened that way. Now look out. And th that, well, that is perplexing, how that happened. So yeah, you tie it just so that... Yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure that was a score. Yeah, you time it so that. Wow, this has really gone from bad to worse here, because now the next hit kills me. Yeah, the the underside is the only spot where it's exposed, and as you can see, it's protecting itself with its shield, but the shield revolves to always face Sonic. So the only way you can damage him is by using his own spike machines against him. It's another one of those bosses that it can only be damaged by the stuff that it sends out at you. And just like Eggman, you have to hit it eight times. Plus, if you take too long and you dawdle, they detonate by themselves. Okay, so... Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get it. No, I didn't. Okay, let's try- Ah, crap. It detonated on me. So yeah, it'll just keep up this pattern. So now I have to wait for it to get the pattern right. And we scored again. Yeah, you need to have plenty of time to fight this thing, and then fight Eggman because you take him on immediately after you're finished with this thing. So, as I said before, you need to be cautious, but you also need to be fast. So now it's time to chase after Eggman. We're gonna go into him without a single ring to my name. Which means one hit and I'm toast, and I have to start over again. So this basically plays out like the mid-boss in Lava Reef. Eggman's gonna have these hands, but this time they're treated... Each of the fingers is treated individually. So you just bounce on them whenever he brings them down. And if you time it right, as you just saw, you can actually score two hits on the finger at once. Yeah, th this, is, this is how Sonic gives Eggman the finger. This is how Sonic gives Eggman a dirty bird. Just keep doing it like this until he has no more fingers. Just like that. So now this is where... This is the tricky part of the Eggman battle. This is a three round battle, but this is where it gets hard, because as you can see, the platform is going to start to go away from me, he's going to shoot flamethrowers, and you have to hit his nose, and then... do that. You hit his... Yeah, you have to hit his nose, and he uses the Master Emerald to charge that laser, Hit him before the laser goes off, and then hit him just before he closes the um, place where the Master Emerald is being kept. And you just keep doing that. And just like any other Eggman battle, well, except for the Labyrinth battle, it's an eight hit ba it's an eight hit affair. Hit him eight times, and his machine is disabled. So now here comes round three, and this one is the easiest part of the three. Just hit him as he's trying to escape with the Master Emerald, but keep moving or else you're gonna run off... You're not gonna have enough speed and you're gonna fall off the platform there and you're gonna have to start all over again. So just keep chasing him down like this. And if you did not get all the Chaos Emeralds, this is actually the last battle in the Sonic playthrough. So he releases the Master Emerald, but he's actually gonna get it back for the final zone, which is the Doomsday Zone. Where you play it out as entirely as Super Sonic, and this was actually the first instance where Sonic as Super Sonic would be used for the entire duration of a final battle. That trend was started here with this game. So basically, obviously, since Sonic 
as Super Sonic uses the rings as fuel, you have to keep the fuel going by collecting as many rings as possible. And he's gonna try and send some missiles to slow you down, but they don't hurt you. And yeah, you're definitely gonna need as many rings as you can because obviously if you run out of them, you're gonna die. And you're gonna have to start all over again. Of course, you have to dodge all these boulders, all these meteors, I should say. A lot, lot of space junk to avoid here when you're taking on Eggman here in the Doomsday Zone. But eventually you're gonna get to a place where you're gonna be able to run free and get a shot at Eggman. So this is another thing where you basically have to hit him with his own weapon. You have to dr basically navigate in such a way that you get the missiles to hit him only right in the face, right there. He cannot take damage on any other part of this ship. Only the missiles hit him and only in that face part. And you have to be careful that you do this quickly enough because obviously if you don't do it quickly enough, you're gonna run out of rings. So yeah, just keep driving it like this. Just keep driving it along. I don't think I scored there. Only a proper hit will get it, and that time it counted. Alright. Not bad. Could be doing better. And of course it doesn't help if I get hit by the stray bullets. Yeah, my palms are so sweaty at this point. Yeah, and then not only do you have to have enough rings to survive, but you also have, en have to have enough rings to make the transition to round 3. And then here you get an opportunity to collect more rings to rejuvenate your supply, of course. And so you just keep doing it. The pattern for this second for form of collecting the rings, basically it simply repeats itself. It's not random. Um, it's always a set pattern. So you basically want to accumulate enough rings where you can start making an, an aggressive attack because you're not actually gaining on Eggman until you make forward momentum. You just want to chase him down, and once you successfully score a hit, then you can keep refueling. But as you saw, he also sends out some large missiles that can stop you if you're not able to catch up with him fast enough. And you can never predict when those missiles are going to come. Sometimes they'll shoot them early, sometimes they'll shoot them too late. In any event, yeah, I didn't hit him in time. So we gotta be... hopefully that we can get him this time. Basically gotta hope that things work out in your favor and that you can actually score the hit before you get struck with the missile. And you really don't have to worry about the time too much. You have enough time, if you've done everything right, to score your 8 hits and get the win. So yeah, he's shooting it off early again. I, I couldn't tell if I scored or not. Yeah, you can never really tell. Unless you've actually... can clearly see that you made contact with him. So let's go after him again. There we go. Now we know for certain we scored. Yeah, and if you have plenty of rings, you can be really aggressive and try and hit him twice. Okay. So I'll just take a few more rings as insurance. Before I try to make another bold aggressive play. Here we go. Did we get him? Yes, we did! It's over! We got it! We win! We did it! He scores! And we get to take the Master Rumble back down into the Ionosphere. At least I believe that's what the top of the Earth is. And Tails makes a cameo as he saves the Master Emerald! What a save by Tails! And we get to take this thing back now to the floating island where it belongs. So let's make our way there right now. So, yeah, that place is called the Floating Island, but obviously since it doesn't have the Master Emerald, it's not floating! But we're gonna change that. So, hard left... Bound for the Floating Island, and we're gonna get this thing floating again.
And the floating island has its Master Emerald again, and it once again can now rise into the heavens. That's what happens when you get all seven Chaos Emeralds and you complete the Doomsday Zone. That's how you get the best ending. And you'll know for sure you def definitely have it because if you didn't get all say it, seven Chaos Emeralds, you wouldn't have these birds or these dolphins chasing after you. So that does it for the Sonic playthrough of Sonic and Knuckles. And if you're familiar with how Sonic 1 and 2 worked, whenever you beat those games, you got to listen to remixes of the music from the various stages in the game, the various zones. And you get to enjoy them again as the credits roll along. You gotta wonder, how are birds and dolphins keeping up with a helicopter that has a jet engine attached to it? Th that's pretty strange, how it works like that. Also strange as well, why is the word Sonic inverted on the plane there? That's another weird thing that's going on. So yeah, that, that's the Sonic playthrough. It is the longer of the two playthroughs. It has eight zones as opposed to six zones, which is what we'll have for the Knuckles playthrough. And in addition to that, also, the Sonic playthrough is actually comparatively easier than the Knuckles playthrough. There are a lot more traps and a lot more um, crazy stuff going on in the Knuckles playthrough as opposed to the Sonic playthrough. And since there are a lot of more opportunities to take different paths as Knuckles that Sonic would not otherwise be able to take, that opens the opportunity to see a lot of new locations that you would not have otherwise been able to see. So we get to really just take a breather and relax after quite a bit of time playing this game. I mean, it's not as long as an RPG, obviously, but... If you're playing it non-stop, then definitely your hands are going to get sweaty, you're definitely going to be breathing a sigh of relief after you finally beat the game. So I'm just happy to have the first of the two playthroughs now completed. And this credit reel is about to draw to a close. And as this credit reel draws to a close, it'll be confirmed by having the good ending occur, and having Sonic transform into Super Sonic, and give us all a thumbs up to tell us that everything is A-OK. -okay. However, everything is not necessarily A-OK. -okay. As you can see, the Eggman we were chasing after is actually a robot in disguise. Transformers! <laughs> yeah, and that's who we're going to be taking on in the Knuckles playthrough. So I want to thank everyone for watching the start of the Let's Play Sonic and & Knuckles, and when I join you again, we will be taking on the Knuckles playthrough, we will take on that guy, who's taunting us and really can't wait to get our, his hands on us, and we go back to the title screen by default, okay. I didn't think that happens automatically, okay. Well, I'll look forward to seeing you in the Knuckles playthrough then. So until next time everyone, take care, and I'll see you soon.